Welcome back. This video is part of a series on the basics of texturing in Maya and Photoshop. In this video, we will be looking at defining specularity and creating a specular map for the wooden crate we've been working on in the previous videos. Even with a detailed diffuse texture, right now my model is far too shiny and looks almost like it has a sticker on it to look like a wooden box and not actually being made of wood, metal, and paint. Adjusting the specular values of my material will help correct this. Just like the surface color or diffuse, I'm able to make a per pixel representation of these specular values. First, we will need to understand what those values are. Since we've created our material using a Fong type shader, we have access to specular shading options. The specular color slider is our primary source of interaction. Specular, on a basic level, represents how shiny an object is, or how much light is reflected off of it. The brighter the color, closer to white, the more reflective light is off the surface, and the closer to black, the darker and less reflective the surface is. Different materials interact with light differently. Things like metals tend to be on the higher end of the specular color spectrum, while rougher materials like dirt and wood will often be on the lower end. There are resources online to give you a good idea of where a material falls on the specular color range, but starting things off, I can use Maya to get a good idea of what looks good for my model. Changing the specular color slider from the default 50% gray and positioning my camera facing the surface of my model, I get an idea of what it will look like when the light is reflecting on it. And for something like the metal that I'm working with, a higher specular value in the nails may be better, but for the wood, it starts to look correct once I get to these lower values. Looking in the color selection here, I see that this has a value of 0.49 and is about a 20% gray. Just like with my diffuse map, I'm going to start off by defining my specular values with a solid base color. To start things off, I'm going to create a folder for my specular. And in this folder, I will start off with a gray that matches the relative tone of what I found in Maya. Naming this, I will save it out as a PNG, calling it crate underscore specular. And in my crate material, I will define the specular color by clicking on the checker box on the right, choosing File, and loading in my specular map. As of right now, nothing really appears differently, and that's because the value that we've chosen is almost identical to what we had before. But as you can see, as I tumble my camera around my object, there is a lack of light reflecting off of it in the way that it started off before. Back in Photoshop, all of the information that I need to make my specular map at this point, having created my entire diffuse texture, can be replicated from the things that I've already made. So thinking for a moment about what I want the surface of my object to look like, the first thing that may come to mind are the nails. By duplicating these, and in this case I'm going to hit Command E to condense these into one layer, I will take the values of this and I'm going to put them up to 100% lightness for now, just to get rid of any of the bevel color on them. And then, considering what I saw in Maya, trying something that's on the opposite end of the spectrum, being about an 80% gray, so in this case, from white, minus 20%. Now, as I pass over these objects with my camera, you can see that the nails reflect light in a way that the rest of the material does not. 
The same thing can be done to get the lines that define the breaks between my boards to not reflect as much light as even the wood does. The idea is that the breaks in the boards are a shadowy negative space in the surface of my object, so there would actually be no reflection in an area that there's no light. Because of this, I want to make sure that these are a completely black value, meaning that there is absolutely no light reflected off of them. At this point, the change is not that noticeable because the wood texture itself is not very reflective, but it does give a little bit of that extra effect of a lack of lighting in those areas. Finally, what we can do is start to make some slight variation on these values. Now, there are some programs that will allow you to generate a specular map based on your diffuse texture or on a bump map. And what this will actually give you is what we're going to create here, which is a map that will give variation on the texture rather than giving you the values. So by taking the boards that I've made, I'm going to duplicate them into my specular folder. I'm going to merge them with Control E, and I'm going to pull all of the color value out of them by hitting Control U and dropping my saturation down to negative 100, bringing all of the color information out of it. Changing my layer blend mode over to overlay, We'll take the colors that I'm using and give them as variation upon the base color that I've already chosen. Now, as I tumble my camera around, I do get some slight variation in the wood grain itself. Nothing too involving, but it's enough to make it feel like it's got a little bit more depth to it. The final touch that I want to add is with the paint. If you've ever been to buy paint, you know that paint comes in a range from glossy to matte as far as the finish, and that can be represented in my texture. Just like our previous elements, copying over these layers into my specular map will help me do so. First thing that I want to do is to remove any saturation from my objects so that I get an idea of what the value will be. For my purposes, I would like to have my paint be a bit more reflective than that of the wood, so that way it helps to have it stand out a bit. It is perfectly acceptable to use a more of a matte paint, but in my case, I will be trying to give it a little bit of a pop. With that change in value, I now am able to see a reflected value on my paint with a little bit of light shine. I can tweak this value to look appropriate to whatever I want my paint to look like. And finally, for a little bit of extra detail, I will take the paint and give it some variation. Doing a quick render clouds filter on a new layer, I'm going to hold Alt underneath the layer in my layers palette to create a clipping mask and have it clip directly to the paint folder and just like the wood, I'm going to switch this to an overlay blend mode and in this case start to reduce the opacity of my variation to better match the original color of my paint. 
And in doing so, it gives just a slight amount of variation and feels like maybe the paint is a little bit more worn off in areas and a little bit more organic. In the next video, I will be talking about bump maps and how they can be used to offset the surface of our materials with regards to the lighting, and as well how we can take that bump map and make it into a normal map to give a better lighting result. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.